This screencast is on comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is found in module four of your textbook and we're looking at the opportunity costs that are involved with each country in the production of certain goods. And whoever has the least opportunity cost has a comparative advantage in producing that good. And if one country has a comparative advantage in one good and another country has a comparative advantage in the other good, then those two countries should trade because they would benefit from working with each other. So when we're talking about comparative advantage, you need to be able to know the difference between the input and the output method. You also need to know the difference of how to figure out absolute advantage and comparative advantage. And then lastly, you need to be able to calculate the terms of trade. So when you're looking here at this diagram, you can see here we've got two countries, A and B, and we've got two products, um, cars and trucks. In the boxes, it's giving it away that this is the output method because it says maximum outputs. Normally, it wouldn't um, have that in that box. It would be blank. And so that's where you would need to recognize that this, there's, what they're saying is that this is the maximum amount of these two goods that these countries can produce. And so then you would be able to see that that's the output method. An example of how it would be the input method is that instead of it having cars and trucks, it might say um, how many resources it takes in order to make one ton of trucks. And so if they were to say, if they were to say that, then what they might have instead of cars and trucks is they, they might have hours for the number of um, hours that it takes the workers to make one ton of trucks, and they might have pounds of steel. And so then for country A and B, you would be looking at the amount of resources that it takes in order to make that set, usually one, um, amount of a certain product. In this case, it was the ton of trucks. So once you figured out that it's the output method, you then can look and figure out absolute advantage. Um, absolute advantage when we're talking about the output method is just the maximum amount that you can make. So who has the largest amount? And so when you're looking at comparing the cars between country in A and B, you can see that country B has an absolute advantage because 35 million is larger than 30 million. So again, absolute advantage is who can make the most. And when you're looking at the trucks, who do you think can make the most? Is it country A or country B? If you're thinking country B, you are correct because 21 is larger than six. This is the output method. Now, if it was the input method, you'd be looking for the least number because you'd be looking at who can use the least amount of resources in order to make that set amount that is being provided. In the example we were using before, it was like one ton of trucks. And so you'd see who uses the less amount of time or hours in order to be able to produce that one ton of trucks. So now we've figured out that this is the output method and that uh, we can see here that country B has an absolute advantage in both. Just because country B has an absolute advantage in both, it does not mean that they should not trade with country A. You need to look at the comparative advantage in order to make that decision. So that's a great question on a test is to have one country have an absolute advantage in both and then they'll, they'll give you different options about trading and one of them will be that they shouldn't because country B is better at making both of them or can make the most of them. But you don't know if they have the least opportunity cost in both. So when we're trying to figure out the comparative, you need to be looking to see for the comparative advantage who has the least opportunity cost. So when you're given this diagram here with country A and B and you've got these cars and trucks and they're telling you the maximum amount that they can produce, you know it's the output method. So when you see output method, think of the word over because that's how you calculate the opportunity cost. You take the productions of the two goods that that country is making and in order to determine the opportunity cost for making the cars, you take the trucks over the amount that of cars that they can produce. So if I'm trying to figure out the opportunity cost for the cars, I am going to take six over 30. And you always want to break it down. And so six over 30 would reduce infraction to one fifth. 
So now if I want to figure out the opportunity cost for country A for making trucks, I need to take the cars over the trucks because that's what I'm trying to figure out here. So 30 over 6 is going to give me an opportunity cost of 5. So now think about for country B. If I want to figure out the opportunity cost of making the cars for country B, I need to take the trucks over the cars. And so that will give me an opportunity cost of 21 over 35, which is 3 fifths. So now if I want to figure out the opportunity cost <coughs> sorry, for country B for making the trucks, I need to take the 35 over 21. And so that's going to give me an opportunity cost of 5 thirds. So now you need to compare the opportunity cost. And so you have a comparative advantage if you have the least opportunity cost. So in this case here, when we're looking at cars, you need to look at the opportunity cost of country A and B. Who has the least opportunity cost? Is it country A or is it country B? It's country A because one-fifth is less than three-fifths. So who has the opportunity cost, the least opportunity cost for making the trucks? Is it country A? or is it country B? And it's country B because 5 thirds is less than 5. Because country A has an oppor a least opportunity cost or comparative advantage in cars, and country B has a comparative advantage in making the trucks, these two countries should trade. Remember, country B has an absolute advantage in both, but they don't have a comparative advantage in both. And so this is a great example of where you should have these two countries trade because country A is far better at making cars than country B and country B is much better at making trucks than country A is. And so with that, the next thing that you need to be able to do now that you've seen that these two countries should trade is you need to figure out the terms of trade. And so once you have this set up, and I always circle my answers because that just sticks out in my head, who has the least opportunity cost when I'm doing this? Because I wanna make sure that I'm setting it up in that way. What you need to do is you need to figure out if you, these countries were to specialize in each of their goods, what would the opportunity cost be? And what you're seeing over here are the numbers that I have already in these two charts there. So if you're somebody who can visualize this and be able to do it on your own, then I suggest that you do that. I myself need to uh, set this up and write it up this way because it allows me just to have all my information in front of me so that way then I can answer this correctly. So what I've done here is I've put the outputs of country A equal to one another. And I have the 6 million trucks are equal to the 30 million of the cars that you have from these two boxes there. And I need to set each one of them equal to one, the cars and the trucks. And so with that, you can see here that one truck equals five cars. And for country A, one car equals one fifth of a truck. And then for country B, I did the same thing. I have the 21 trucks equals the 35 cars. And then I reduced that to three trucks equals five cars. And then setting that equal to one, one truck equals five thirds of a car and one car equals three fifths of a truck. And again, you can see all of that in those boxes and you always wanna make sure that those numbers um, represent. So the next thing that I do is I circle what the um, comparative where the comparative advantage is and I will circle that and so therefore we know that country A is good at making the cars and so I circle the 150t and I also put a plus sign because what's that saying to me is that I have to remember that if they're going to trade with somebody else they need to get for every car that they trade at least a fifth of a truck because that's what they gave up in order to make that car. But if they can't get at least a fifth of a truck, it's not worth it for them in, to trade. And so that's just allowing me to remember how to set up my terms of trade. The same is true over here. You know that country B, it should specialize in making the trucks. I circle that 5 thirds C and I put a plus sign next to it. 
So now when I'm looking at writing out these terms of trade, what I need to do is write one for each of the cars and the trucks. And so what you see here is that for every car that is traded, at least one fifth of a truck has to be get it has to be taken in by country A. But country B is not going to give more than three-fifths of a truck because that's their opportunity cost. So their terms of trade need to be somewhere in between one-fifth of a truck and three-fifths of a truck because everybody wins from trade. And so by picking a number in between, then both country A and B will benefit from this. Okay, and so the same is true then when we talk about the trucks. Uh, in order to trade one truck, country B has to get at least five-thirds of a car because that's what it took them to make it. But country A is not going to give more than five cars because that's their opportunity cost. So they need to come up with some agreement. On a test, you're usually not asked to give the exact number. You usually will have a multiple choice and the ranges will either be given or they'll have a number that will nicely fit into the range that you have figured out. So if we were to look at graphically what this means then, when we're talking about um, trading, this is the original one. And all that's done here is that the maximum amounts when they first started before they traded are put here on the graph. And what you see is that country A has six trucks and they have 30 cars, and country B has 21 trucks and 35 cars. And that just came from that chart that was given to us. The terms of trade that we calculated was for every one car we had that ratio and for every truck we had that range. And so what I am telling you is I'm just going to give you a number. And so I'm saying for every car that they trade, they have to get at least two-fifths of a truck. And for every truck that gets traded, they have to get at least two and a half cars. So let's just say that that's what they've agreed to. So if that's what they've agreed to, graphically then, how can you demonstrate this as to what's going to happen? When you are asked to show what happens when they trade, what you're showing is that if they were to specialize in only this good and they were to trade all of them, what is the maximum amount in the end that can be made? And so that's what you are looking at when you see this. So this here was the amount that we said that they would trade. And so for country A, for example, we said that they were good at making the cars and they made 30 of them. And so now because of the 30, um, in, instead of being able to get six trucks, if they trade all of their cars, they could have 12. And if country B were to trade all of their trucks, they would end up with 52 and a half cars instead of 35 if they were just to specialize on their own. And so you can see there that everybody wins, that the production possibility curves get um, increased or shifted to the right because of the trade.